WTVR-TV, Richmond, Virginia, Channel 6. Playing basketball today, a sellout crowd of 24,000 on hand to see which team wins the battle for Seattle. Southeast Conference champion Kentucky or Big Ten co-champion Illinois. Came out with a strong second half against Maryland Thursday night. Their patient offense, a tough man-to-man -man defense, overcame a nine-point deficit as they hung on for the win. For Kentucky fans, that was the undercard for yet another battle of the bluegrass between Kentucky and Louisville with the powerful Wildcat front line making the difference. CBS sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is deep in the heart of round ball country. Lexington, Kentucky for today's Mid-East Regional Final between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Illini guard Bruce Douglas, the Big Ten co-MVP, is a classic role player. Scoring, keying pass breaks, or working underneath the boards. Kentucky answers with their catalyst, Dickie Beal, a blue blur who puts the go in Kentucky's attack. The Illini and the Wildcats on the last rung of the ladder reaching to Seattle today on CBS. Today's regional final tournament game is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is applying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parks. is the house that Ruff built. Ruff Arena, Lexington, Kentucky. Obviously, the Kentucky Wildcats have a big advantage in playing the regional finals here at home before the sellout crowd of 24,000. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Lieber. How big an advantage? Well, let me tell you something. Kentucky has won 59 of the last 61 games at home. They've won 21 in a row on this court. They won 15 in a row this year. With me is Larry Conley. He can tell you something about it because he captained Adolph Ruff's team back in 1966. It's a big advantage. Frank, it really is. You know, we talk about statistics, but I think the most amazing one is the fact that Kentucky has only lost 48 times since 1943 in Lexington. They're amazing at home. Obviously, they've got a big advantage. So, how to offset it? Well, Illinois has a big problem. At least they did this morning. Efren Winters. Their leading scorer and rebounder, badly sprained ankle. Will he play? He's the player, really, that they need to depend on. They hope he's ready to play. We'll just have to wait and see. Illinois, a very patient basketball team, and we'll be back with the starting lineups from Lexington, Kentucky, in just a moment. Welcome back to Rupp Arena, and now for today's starting lineups, let's go to public address announcer Jim Engel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rupp Arena for this NCAA Mid-East Regional Final Basketball game between the Fighting Illini of Illinois and the Wildcats of Kentucky. And now the starting lineup for Illinois at forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Ephraim Winters. For Kentucky at forward, a 7-1 senior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, number 31, Sam Dewey. For Illinois at forward, a 6-4 sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, number 22, Doug Altenberger. For Kentucky at forward, a 6-8 sophomore from Roberta, Georgia, Number 34, Kenny Walker. For Illinois, at center, a 6'8 junior from Chicago, Illinois. Number 23, George Montgomery. For Kentucky, at center, a 6'11 senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Number 54, Melvin Turkey. For Illinois, at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Quincy, Illinois, number 25, Bruce Douglas. For Kentucky, at guard, a 6'5 senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 20, Jim Master. 
For Illinois at guard, a 5'11 senior from Robbins, Illinois, number 21, Quinn Richardson. And for Kentucky at guard, a 5'11 senior from Covington, Kentucky, number 11, Dickie Beal. And the coaches for Illinois in his ninth season, Lou Henson. And for Kentucky in his 12th season, Joe B. Hall. We are hanging from the rafters here at Rapp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky. The officials in the ball game today. Dick Paparo from Syracuse, New York. Hank Nichols from Villanova, Pennsylvania. And Jim Clark from Casa Grande, Arizona. Three of the most highly regarded officials in the college game today. Kentucky won the first game between these two teams at Champaign 56-54. Officiating situation was a little different. It was, Frank. They actually had to go into the stands and get three people from out of the stands because the weather was so bad, the officials could not get in for the game. Sam Bowie will jump center with Efren Winters. Keep a close watch on Winters. He severely sprained his ankle Thursday night with six minutes to go in that game, and Illinois really had to hang on for dear life. And I and I controlling the opening tip-off. Bruce Douglas at the top of the circle, hounded by Master. All year long, Illinois has done it with good patient offense. You may see him be even more patient here today. Richards hit to Douglas on top. Doug Altenberger guarded closely by Master. To Winters, who comes out of the middle. Interesting that Kentucky opened up in that man-to-man -man defense. I think they expect to see a lot of patience from this Illinois offense. There's the five point. Well, the Illini turn it over. In the first 30 seconds of the game, no score. Ironically, the three teams that Kentucky has played in the tournament so far, they have played each of them in regular season and beaten them. So that's uh, an advantage too, perhaps, working for Joe B. Hall's Wildcats. Early going, both clubs playing man-to-man. -man. There's the lob to Turpin. Turpin almost got too far underneath the basket. He was going to slam it and saw he was too far underneath. One so of the, he just dropped it through. Offensively, one of the things that two, these two big guys do is Turpin and Bowie both look for each other once they get the ball. Richardson on top to George Montgomery has given away quite a bit of height in the pivot. Illinois at a severe height disadvantage here. Altenberger, whose dad played for the Illini back some 20 years ago. This crowd pretty excited by the way they're playing man-to-man -man defense. Great shot by Douglas right in Masters' face. Bruce Douglas, who has averaged 13 points a game, getting the Illini's first basket. And we are tied at two. Dickie Beal, you watch this guy, and you're going to see a guy who looks like a helicopter on the floor. He is always moving. Illinois will pick up man-to-man, -man and they'll stay in their man-to-man -man defense. They play it about 90% of the time. Beal looking inside for Bowie to Master. It's a senior-dominated Kentucky team. The only non-senior out there is Master. They turn it over. Douglas coming up with the ball. Very customary for him because he leads the Illini in steals. And assists as well, which he's done for the last two years. He and Jim Rowinski were the co-Big Ten most valuable players this year. Richardson to Montgomery on the outside. Altenberger had that shot altered by the Twin Towers underneath the basket. Bowie was there and Turpin, and he did not get glass. For the fighting Illini to have a chance today, they're going to have to put the shot up from the outside, and they're going to have to make it. Going inside is going to be very difficult against this tall Kentucky team. Turpin. As they call it here in Lexington, Turpin time. 6'11 senior gets his second basket, and Kentucky leads it 4-2. to two. Master playing Douglas pretty close out front. Look how far Bowie is. Bowie is guarding winners. He's away from the basket. Richardson one-on-one -on -one with Dickie Beal, the two small men. Again, the fighting line I showing you that good patient offense. They'll put up the good percentage shot. They will not take a bad one. Douglas holding up three fingers on the outside. Score that first game was 56-54 at Champaign. It was one on the last second shot by James Blackman, who's a top-notch Kentucky freshman. One of the first men in off the bench. Douglas over Master. Turpin got a piece of it, but the foul will be on Master. 
It looked as if Douglas had the one-on-one -on -one move. He had Master whipped, got good help from Turpin on the inside, and as we said, they're going to have to take it from the outside. Douglas didn't see Turpin there, but Master got him. Bruce Douglas is a 74% free throw shooter from Quincy, Illinois. Played on the same high school basketball team as Michael Payne, the Iowa star. Four to three, Kentucky. Watch the fighting line. They'll pick up man-to-man -man full court. That's what you've got to do if you're outmanned on the inside, if you've got a size problem, which the Illinois club does have today, you've got to put pressure up court. Bowie, amazingly enough, at 7-2 will bring it down occasionally, as you saw there. He is sort of their pressure release man. When they get in trouble down court, he comes up and they simply lob to him. Master. Altenberger with the rebound. Doug Altenberger, who at one time considered coming to Kentucky. Of course, with the strong family ties, he wound up at Illinois. He's turned into a fine player. Montgomery can't get the shot away. Good thinking by Montgomery. He knew that Turpin was behind him. He turned and went back out. Look at Richardson inside. Little double pump motion by Quinn Richardson. The 5'11 senior guard from Robbins, Illinois. And Illinois has its first lead of the game at 5-4. I guess the little guys have no fear. They decide to go in there anyway. Showed amazing hang time on that particular shot. Turpin. Well, when you're 6'11", and you can shoot from the perimeter, I think you've got something. <laughs> he does it inside, and he does it outside. He's been a good scorer from that range right there all year long for Kentucky. Helped them win another Southeastern Conference Championship, their 35th. Turpin has Kentucky's first six points in this game. Winners. That's a good, strong rebound by Walker. He got up in the air that time. Really a big league board. Beal almost slips. Turpin, who feels he's hot. He's done it all for them so far here in the first half. Turpin, eight, Illinois, five. 14-40. Left in the first half. The decibels are beginning to rise in here. Illinois, very patient again. Good idea. You take the crowd out of the basketball game. Slow them down. Get them back in their seats. Get your shot up. Douglas with the miss. The rebound coming to Beal. Dickie Beal, who has been plagued by injuries throughout his career and didn't hit the starting lineup till the last 12 games of the regular season. We get a foul called away from the ball on Richardson. Lou Henson looking on. Lou is playing in his ninth NCAA tournament. I should say coaching in his ninth. He feels like he's playing. And has averaged 20 wins over the last six years. Timeout. Kentucky leads it. Eight to five. Frank Lieber along with Larry Connolly at a very noisy Rupp Arena. Kentucky leading 8-5 here in the early going, but the Illini are not without their fans. So far, it's been Melvin Turpin who has hit all eight points, and Melvin looks like he really wants a basketball. Frank, he really does. He's the offensive star for this club. He's led them in scoring this year. And really, when he wants the basketball, Kentucky will get it to him because he has the good range from 15 feet, and he's very strong on the inside. I made reference earlier to uh, these two big guys, both Turpin and Bowie, looking for each other on offense, and they do quite often. When one gets the ball, the other one is always trying to work his way open. Three-point lead for the Wildcats as they inbound. Beal lobs it to Turpin over Mintz. That's his first miss. Scott Mintz came into the game for Illinois during the timeout. He did not replace Winters, however. No, he took Montgomery's place. I've been watching Winters go up and down the floor. He doesn't seem to be having any problem running. It's just a matter of his cutting to the side. Mintz has started six games this year, so he's a seasoned veteran for the Illini. Nice pass underneath to Douglas. Good look inside. Douglas got a screen, a double screen on the other side and gave a little ball fake. He froze the Kentucky defense and he got the ball off the glass. 
Wildcats got James Blackman getting ready to come into the game. There's another edge for Kentucky, the depth of their bench, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they go ni about nine or ten players. They can go down there, both big guys and guards. There's Master. Jim Master, who is the Kentucky designated long-range bomber. He is the zone buster par excellence. Played in our Pan American team last year. And an outstanding senior had somewhat of a, a shooting slump during the season this year, but he's got it back. Altenberger trying to hit. Rebound. Bowie tips it away. Save. Nice Looks job like, by Mintz. Mintz got in there. Kentucky had him pretty well screened off. Bowie was so busy screening winners away from the basket that Mintz got to the ball. Efren winners, leading score and rebounder for the Atlanta Richardson. And Bowie scrapes it off the window. He had 12 the other night against Maryland. Dickie Beal bringing the ball off the court had 15 points, nine assists, and six steals against Maryland. He's already got four assists in this game. Well, 37, Kentucky. Turpin really trying to fight for position against Mintz inside. Look at Bowie look in. Look at Master look in. Mintz tips it away and out of bounds. And they say that Turpin touched it last. Joe B. Hall doesn't agree. Joe B. now 18 years head coach at Kentucky. He was an assistant when you were there, wasn't he? Started his, his first year at Kentucky was my senior year. Made Good. your run a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later on. All right. Illinois with the basketball in the front court. They have a chance to trim the lead to one with 12 minutes to go. Mintz has it curl out on him. And Dickie Beal fouling Richardson. First foul for Beal, second team foul on the Kentucky Wildcats. Oftentimes you see the tall timber going inside against that glass. That time the two little guys, Richardson and Beal, both about 5'10 to 5'11, battling for the rebound. Richardson won that battle. Illinois 25 and 4 on the year, Kentucky 28 and 4. Line I tied Purdue for the conference championship. Didn't play a tournament, of course. And Kentucky won not only the Southeast Conference Championship regular season, but the tournament as well. Mintz. It's like Blackman got him on the arm just as he started down inside. James Blackman, the 6'3 freshman from Marion, Indiana. He's the young man who won the first game for Kentucky that they played on Christmas Eve under less than ideal conditions in Champaign. It's when they had that windshield factor, 60 or 70 below. Montgomery is back in the game, and now Winters comes out for the first time. Winters did not score here in the early going. From the corner, Douglas. Rebound, Beal. Illinois not having much success in that outside shooting that we talked about in the early going, and that's the reason they're down three. They've had the shots, they just haven't dropped. Wildcats had all they could handle the other night from Louisville. What a great job by Milt Wagner and Lancaster Gordon. That is Master. Master with his second basket. Gordon and Lancaster at 47 points between them. Correction, Walker. Kenny Walker with his first basket. Kentucky's gone to his own defense. A 2-3. Illinois got it in the middle to Altenberger. First basket of the day for Nor or Doug Altenberger. Right here's the sign of a good basketball team. They immediately recognized that Kentucky went to that 2-3 zone. Altenberger saw the opening, went right to the middle. They got him the ball, and he got the basket. Rebound underneath by Altenberger. Again, Kentucky's going to stay in that zone defense. This time they'll make the adjustment. Illinois lines up with what looks like a 1-4. Altenberger's gone to the wing now. Douglas handling the ball out front. You would think Richardson would be the guy who runs the club, but it's Douglas who really gets the basketball to the open man. Richardson with the cross-court pass to Altenberger. On top to Douglas. A lot of shoving going on between Mintz and Bowie, and this time they put it on Mintz. Don't ever think for a minute that this fight in the Lion Act Club didn't come in here to win this basketball game. They know they're in a tough place to play. Watch Mintz and Bowie go at it right there. Could have gone either way. Kentucky leading 12 to 9 as we hit the 10 minute mark. That's what's left to play here in the first half at Rupp Arena. Pretty low scoring affair. I think we expected it. We knew that Illinois would be patient on their offense. Kentucky is also showing a lot of patience on offense. Well, Lou Henson indicated to us yesterday, no way we can run with them. Turpin driving the paint. 
Three players hit the deck. I think he ran over both Montgomery and Mint. It looked like Walker might be hurt. He's underneath the basket. Foul, I believe, was on Turpin. Let's see. Kenny Walker is shaken up. Timeout. Kentucky leading Illinois 12 to 9 with 9.48 left to play in the first half. 6 8 sophomore Kenny Walker being helped from the court. Uh, looked like it might have been an ankle, Larry. This is exactly what happened right here. You see Turpin with a charge. Look at Altenberger go down. He ran into the back of Walker. Now watch Montgomery fall on Walker, and Walker very casually fell to the floor. I don't think he's hurt too badly. I think it may be just a slight ankle sprain. Expect to see him back in the ballgame. They replace him with Winston Bennett, a 6'7 freshman, number 25 from Louisville. Illinois has hit only 36%. And Kentucky has hit 67%. So Kentucky now with Bennett in there with Bowie and Turpin, the Twin Towers, and up front, they've got Blackman and Beal, two freshmen in there right now for the Kentucky Wildcats as Douglas brings the ball across the center line. Mintz still in there along with winners, Montgomery and Altenberger for the Illini. Tip by Bowie, who saves it, but Montgomery gets it back. I'll tell you, for a guy that is seven feet tall, he is exceptionally quick. Did you see him get to that wing and that steal? Got long arms. Great anticipation. Efren Winters is fouled by Bennett as he hits the slam. You want to see a great lob? Watch this pass to the inside. A beautiful feed by Bruce Douglas. Winters up, strong with the move. Nobody can reach that far up. Winters looks like that ankle is in pretty good shape. Six nine sophomore from Chicago. Can't complete the three point play, but the Illini get it right back. So it is Kentucky by one, 12 to 11. And they're going to stay in that two three zone. You see Blackman and Beal on the point out there. Illinois is going to tag her with a one two two, and they put Mintz and Altenberger on the wings with Douglas up top. Kentucky very leery. They may be thinking about winners going up again. But here's Altenberger. Mintz had his hands on it. Bowie took it away. Thus far, Illinois has got uh, Kentucky playing their game. I want to tell you something. Don't think the Illini didn't come here to play today. They're ready to play a basketball game. If this Kentucky crowd and this team doesn't think so, they're going to they're, they're gonna, gonna be expecting it. Dickie Beal looking things over. Bowie has come out of the middle. It's all they're left with, and there's Turpin. Shame, huh? Looks like Mintz with a foul right there. Turpin on the lower left side of the lane they really try to get the ball to him a lot when he wants it and obviously he wants it because he's had the hot hand here in the first half Bill will pull it inbounds for the Wildcats and again we saw Illinois go into that man-to-man -man defense on the out-of-bounds play We're seeing more and more teams do that more college teams playing man-to-man -man on that out-of-bounds I think a lot of clubs have begun to uh, find ways to get into that zone defense and get good, easy shots on the out-of-bounds play. Turpin with the fake on this. Loose ball. Vince coming up with it, looking for help. Still loose. Finally, Douglas. Three on two break. Douglas travels. That looked like a goal line stand at the free throw line down there. There were about seven guys on the floor down there. Douglas came up with it, committed the turnover. Lou Hudson, who's a Lion Eye, won their first Big Ten championship since 1963 this year. Master inbounding. Douglas with just slight pressure on Beal out there. Illinois staying with that man-to-man -man defense, and Kentucky again goes inside the curve. Master trying to drive on Altenberger, has to bring it back outside. You know, since they put Scott Mintz in the basketball game, he's really shut Turpin down pretty well. He has made a basket. Good switch right there. Good help by Mintz. Altenberger caught up with Master. That's a good defensive play right there. Lou Henson teaching his fundamental defense, man-to-man, -man. good help. Illinois methodical, well-drilled, hard-nosed, Big Ten-type defense. And they're showing it here at Rupp Arena today. Bennett. Freshman that time trying to brute force it. And Mintz is fouled. We, 
We, ta we talked about defense. Watch this right here. Watch Scott Mintz come off and help. He got master, slowed him up, gave Altenberger an opportunity to catch up with him. Then when he did, he went back to Turpin, his own man. That's great defense. Good man-to-man -man pressure. Second foul on Bennett as we return to live action with seven minutes left to play in the first half. Very low-scoring game at 12 to 11. Kentucky leading by one. We had a low-scoring affair in Atlanta today, too, between Virginia and Indiana. Altenberger. Face up. He's not going to miss that shot all day. No, he won't. He's their long-range shooter. He just happens to be missing right now. He's shooting 51% for the year, and most of that from the outside. The foul is on George Montgomery, the Illini center. 6'8 junior from Chicago. Team fouls. Kentucky has six, and Illinois has four, with six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Good switch again by the fighting Illini out front. You saw Altenberger and Douglas communicate. They made the switch. And Master almost committed a turnover by stepping back over the line. Winston batted in the corner to Dickie Beal. Looking inside to the two big guys. Turpin off to Bennett. Didn't hit the shot, but was fouled by Mintz, and that is three on him, I believe. Looks, Looks like Douglas. Now I gotta give it to Douglas. Yeah, they're right. gonna give it to Douglas on the block. He got to Bennett just as Bennett was making his move to the basket. Watch it again right here. You see Bennett with a good feed from Turpin. Takes one step. Douglas did not have himself established, and he got called for the block. Two shots, Two shots coming up for Winston Bennett. He's the first recruit they've had out of Louisville quite some time, isn't he? I think he's always had a difficult time recruiting out of Louisville. And now with Denny Crum in the club, but he's producing every year in the NCAA record. He's formulated down there for the Cardinals. It makes it even tougher for them to go in and get players out of that area. Two-point lead for the Wildcats. It's been tied all the way through. Kentucky's backed off of that pressure. They opened up in a man-to-man -man defense, and then they went to a 2-3. Might not be a bad idea with them, as you can look at that 2-3 zone from high up, the high-angle camera. Pretty good idea because the fighting line are struggling a little bit from the outside. Mets. Altenberger inside the paint. Grace Bees to Montgomery. Montgomery gets the rebound off his knee. Kentucky's ball out of bounds. For the, for the record, Illinois is 3-1 and one here in Rupp Arena. But it should be pointed out that none of those games have been against Kentucky. They're in the Kentucky Invitational Tournament. Here comes Richardson back into the game for the Illini. It's been a frustrating afternoon so far for Illinois. There was a good feed by Altenberger inside to Montgomery. He just couldn't handle it to get the shot in. Bennett. 360 move to the hoop. Winston Bennett gets his first basket. He came off the bench and had 10 very big points in 15 minutes against Louisville the other night. Kentucky with its biggest lead at five. Illinois has been able to penetrate that zone defense, but they haven't been able to make the shots once they got the ball in there. That one really got the pom-poms going up in the stands again. Douglas. There it is. That's what they need, the outside shooting of Douglas, Altenberger, and Richardson. If they do that, they'll loosen up their Kentucky zone. Good pressure on the inside. They really allow the inbound pass, the pressure on the guys inside. Let Beal throw it, but make sure you're covered for everybody breaking to the ball. Kentucky by three with just under five minutes left to play in the first half. Beal fakes the jumper. Over Douglas, doesn't take it. It's interesting, despite the fact this is Kentucky's home arena, they were not allowed to practice on their own arena this week, except the one practice you're allowed the day before the game on, on uh, Wednesday. Coach Hall got upset one time this year. They had a Billy Joel concert in here, and they couldn't get in here. He couldn't understand that. <laughs> Master from the corner. Jim Master with his second long-range ICBM. Makes it 18-13, Kentucky. Kentucky with the big edge in the front line, scoring so far. The lob pass into Winters, and he is fouled by Bowie. And that's the second time that Illinois has gone to the inside with that lob to Winters. He has no fear of these twin towers when he goes inside, and they're more than willing to lob the ball up there for, the, for him to stub. He got the first one. That time, Bowie fouled him. 
Joe Hall talking right there to Sam Bowie, explaining to him how he wants to defend Winters to keep him away from that basket. Efren Winters, an all Big Ten performer. He knows what it's like to be competitive. He comes from a family of 13 kids. They got a little competitive around mealtime, I'm sure. Lou Hansen, very, very intense. Looks like Kenny Walker's going to come back into the ballgame. Kenny Walker, the 6'8 sophomore who injured his ankle earlier, is back in the contest, and Bowie will get a rest. You know, talking about ankle injuries, it's really a shame that Efren Winter is in there 100% here today because he's one of the outstanding sophomores in this country. Timeout, 4.07 left to play in the first half. Coming up at halftime, highlights from that exciting Virginia-Indiana game just concluded, and a preview of tomorrow's two regional finals, the Midwest final and the West final. Shooting statistics, Kentucky shooting 62% of the first half to the Illini's, 38%, and yet Illinois is within four. If there's one bright light to be said about the way Illinois has played here in the first half, it's the fact that even though they're shooting 38%, they're only down four points. I think that bodes well for them because if Douglas Richardson and Altenberger start to light up from the outside, we could see uh, an awfully good basketball game. Lou Hanson, who's been around this game a long time, 22 years as a college head coach at Hardin-Simmons at New Mexico State, and for the last nine years at Illinois. Kentucky inbounding, and Beal in the front court will run the show. So far, that pressure by the Fighting Illini has really not hurt Kentucky. They've been able to break the press and get into their half-court game. 18-14, Wildcats lead it with 3.50 left in the half. Beal, short with the jumper. Rebound, Altenberger had it. Who's got it? Beal winds up with it again, and Bennett underneath. Well, you talk about a bounce of the ball. That's about the third time that's occurred down there. The ball seems to be very slippery on that end of the floor. Once again, a six-point advantage for Kentucky, and that will match the biggest lead of the ball game so far. Richardson cans one. That's what Illinois has got to do. They moved the ball around the perimeter of that defense against Kentucky, and they got the open man. That time it was Richardson. 20 to 16, Wildcats lead it as we hit the three-minute mark. Left to play in the first half. Of course, Lexington and Rupp Arena will be home for the final four next year. Right on this court, which you'll see on CBS. Kentucky showing a little bit of patient offense of their own right here. Bennett, posted up with hitters, gets the basket. I'll tell you, he gets a roll on that basketball about every time he goes down that lane. It draws about every inch of iron up there, but he gets it to roll in. Things seem to happen, and most of them are good when uh, Bennett comes in off the bench for the Wildcats. As we said, he had 10 the other night against Louisville. Richardson answers with a two-pointer of his own, his third. And I'll tell you what, why that's happening over there. They're screening that downside man on that zone defense. Five-second call right there. They got the ball back. Good defense. First turnover by Illinois against Kentucky with that pressure. Joe B. Hall, who coaches the winningest program in the history of college basketball. In terms of victories, national titles, you name it, Kentucky's on top in virtually every category. 25, 25. Winston Bennett hit Doug Altenberger just now with an elbow. You'll see right here as we come back in here, look at this defense by Illinois. Dickie Beal holding the basketball, looking, looking, nobody there. And remember the ball's got to touch the hands of the inbound player before that count stops. It didn't, and it goes back to Illinois. And while we were away, Altenberger got hit in the jaw, and it looked like Bennett who committed the foul, and Altenberger will go to the line. Bowie is back in replacing Bennett, who has three personal fouls. Doug Altenberger from Peoria, 6'4", sophomore. That makes it a two-point game. Let's see if Illinois can get it back one more time. Good lob to Bowie, and that's the way Kentucky handles the press. They get it right back to Beal, and he busts it up the side. 
Neal, as we mentioned, is the guy who makes him go. He'll give him a kick of the pants if necessary. He's a coach on the floor. And Joby Hall said he is playing about as good as any point guard I have ever had. Winters grabs it off the glass, but a nice play by Mintz, who deflected that pass off the backboard. And here come the Illini now with a chance to tie with a minute 45 left to play in the first half. Kentucky having the edge inside, as you can tell by that graphic. Still in that 2-3 zone. Billy now has moved out on Richardson, who's made two shots in a row from right there. I'm wondering if they might hold the basketball for the last shot of the first half. Make Kentucky come out of that zone. A minute 25 left in the half. There's Richardson. He's got second thoughts about that shot now with Bowie there. He moved away and he thought about it. Richardson under Bowie. Hits with the open shot. Couldn't hit it. Turpin with the rebound. Here come the Wildcats with a minute left to play in the half. Good move by Illinois to get back on defense. Kentucky not able to run that patented fast break that they have. The fighting Illini in good position to handle it. Maybe Kentucky should stop and look now for that last shot of the first half. It looks as if they're not. They're still trying to work the ball inside. Turpin has it blocked on him. It's stolen by Douglas. 35 seconds left in the half. Mintz, a six-footer. Good feed by Douglas. Mintz just pulled it inside. The defense was not set up, and he got it in. We've got a tied basketball game. Scott Mintz with his first basket. And now it will be Kentucky going for the last shot and a chance to break the tie here at the end of the first half. Beal holding up four fingers. They better get into it. Dickie Bale at the buzzer gets his first basket of the game and puts Kentucky back out in front. That's the end of the first half with the score. Kentucky 24, Illinois 22. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Leading 24-22 over Illinois. I'm Frank Lieber along with Larry Conley thus far. Illinois has got Kentucky playing their game. They really have. Illinois' defense has really effectively shut down Melvin Turpin, who had such a great start. He hit his first four baskets and looked like he was going to be a terror in the first half. Then all of a sudden, Scott Mintz got into the basketball game and just ended it right there. And I think that's really been the reason that Illinois has stayed as close as they have, because they certainly haven't shot the ball that well. Now, Kentucky has the edge in uh, field goal percentage here in the first half, a very sizable edge at one point, which was narrowed uh, near the end of the half. But uh, there you see it right now at halftime, 65 to 45 percent. A lot of tenacity on the part of uh, Illinois. Bruce Douglas uh, doing an outstanding job, ball stealing, ball hawking. Here's that good defense we talked about. Look at Douglas strip the ball from Turpin right there. We talked about his completeness as a player. Watch him right here. He took it on the defense. Watch Mintz filter inside. Good feed by Douglas. Mintz sees there's no one around and stuck it in. We talked about the shooting of these two clubs, obviously with nine field goals. You see right here on this end, this is what Illinois has done on the outside. They've made five of their nine field goals from here. They don't want to go inside against the taller Kentucky team. You go down to the other end, you see Kentucky and all those red dots. That's where they get the bulk of their offense. Their shots are all on the inside. Interesting stat here in the first half. Sam Bowie has not attempted a single shot. Of course, Mel Turpin has been the story. He hit his first four shots, but then he cooled off after Mintz got on him. Kentucky will get the ball to open the second half here. Don't be surprised if they don't try to go inside to Bowie a little bit in the second half here because he's also an offensive threat. You know, he laid off two years, Frank, with that bad leg. He had that stress fracture. And when you're out that long, about the last thing that comes back to you as a player is that shot. That's what you lose, and you need to get that timing back. Uh, right now, he hasn't had a chance to use it. Wildcats inbounded in the backcourt. It comes into Master. Kentucky leading 24 to 22. This man, Dickie Beal, hit the last second shot at the buzzer at the end of the first half to give Kentucky the advantage right now. Their biggest lead has been six. Illinois has been in front just one time, and that was early in the game. By one point, the Wildcats throw it away. And again, they tried to force it to the inside, and it was Bowie trying to make the pass to Turpin. They do look for each other, but that time Bowie threw it into the photographer's row. 
Illinois has lost four games this year, but they have all been close. Interesting oddity. You look at their starting lineup. Numerically, they go from 21 to 25. Right in order. Douglas with the miss. Saved by Winters. Montgomery tried the tip, and the next one comes down off the window to Turpin. You know, even though they didn't get the basket that time, they showed good offensive work on the glass right there. Both Winters and Montgomery going up against Kentucky's two big guys. Kentucky out-rebounded Illinois only by four, despite the big height advantage. Kenny Walker... Starts it off in the second half for the Wildcats and builds their lead back to four points. And now Master back out picking Douglas up, giving him some of his own medicine. A little bit of defensive pressure by the Wildcats. And Mintz is getting ready to come right back in the game. Altenberger, perhaps the best outside shooter the Illini have. Kentucky's gone away from that zone defense they used in the second part of the first half, and they've gone back to their man-to-man -man defense, which is what they opened the game with. Montgomery out from the pivot, bringing Turpin out with it. Winters finally settles in. Joe B. Hall, head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. There's an interesting substitution. It looks like Mintz is coming in for Richardson. So they're going to move Altenberger, who's been playing inside, outside, and he goes down to press the ball. Now, Altenberger was originally a guard. They got Anthony Welch hurt very early in the season, and they had to switch him to the forward position. So obviously, uh, they gained some of the height advantage. Heel! Just give him a sliver of an opening, and he's gone. That's twice in a row Kentucky's been able to penetrate the Illinois defense on that right side. Master made the pass the last time for the assist. That time, Beal got the basket. So Altenberger playing to the backcourt now with Douglas. Mintz buries one from the free throw line. Scott Mintz, 6'9", sophomore from Kankakee. Again, a two-point game at 28-26 as Bowie brings it across. Montgomery chose not to come down the court to pick him up and play him out there. And once he crosses midcourt, Beal just comes and gets it from him. I think this Kentucky team isn't tournament hardened. This is their 72nd NCAA tournament game. Going back down through the years. Beal with the miss, and Mintz grabs the rebound. And again, it was the good screen out that Illinois had. That's what you can do when you play a man-to-man -man defense. You can screen your man away from that glass, and Illinois had it surrounded. Chance to tie here. Mintz with the miss. Turpin almost lost it. Beal down court quickly to Master. Followed by Bowie. Sam Bowie getting his first basket. He did it in grand style. Thirty to twenty-six, Kentucky leading. Just under seventeen minutes. Bowie has five rebounds thus far. Kentucky's gone to his own defense now. They went away from the man-to-man, -man, which they opened the second half with. They're in a 1-3-1. Beal on the point. They got Turpin and Bowie on the wings. A very quick walker in the middle. Altenberger working the outside. Illinois is going to be very patient. They're going to look over the zone defense, and there's Douglas. Douglas down to hit the 20 footer. Here come the Wildcats. Beal says, let's slow it down now. Set it up. Illinois is going to stay in that man-to-man. -man. That's what they've played all afternoon. And virtually all year, for that matter. Turpin. Again, Bowie with the follow. And he's fouled. <laughs> Sam's coming alive. If you don't believe it, watch this here. Turpin with a miss. Watch him on the right side. He missed it. Go to the left side. And he got it in. Watch it from upstairs. Right here. Turpin with a miss. You'll see Bowie. Good effort on the first time. Went back for the second one. He's got the foul. We'll go to the line. He's gotten two field goals to start the second half here for the Kentucky Wildcats. Sam with four points and seven rebounds. Joe B. Hall upset about something over there. Bowie, of course, an amazing story. Now he missed two years with that stress fracture in his left shin bone and worked patiently and worked hard to get back. Oh. 
Well, he's a little bit short. Maybe that ankle bothered him a little bit on that shot. That's a shot he'll make most of the time. That's master shot. Turpin this time on the foul. Can't get it to go, but he's fouled. Illinois now can't buy a shot. And Kentucky is starting really to show its superiority on the backboard. That's so, where their strength lies inside with those three big guys. There's Lou Henson right there walking back to his bench after he talked to one of his guards. And they've taken that from Winters out of the basketball game. And noticing Winters prior to the start of the second half, he seemed to be walking a lot more gingerly than he was before the game. Oftentimes when you go out after playing the first half and you sit in the dressing room listening to what you're going to do in the second half, it will stiffen up a little bit, and I think maybe that's what happened. He needed to get it warm a little bit, and I don't think he is. Turpin has eight points all in the first half, and he has five rebounds, and four of those have come here in the first four and a half minutes of the second half. That's Kentucky's biggest lead, seven. They're going to stay in that 1 3 1. You see the fighting in the line. I line it up in their 1 4. They'll move the ball around the perimeter so they can find their good shooters. And that's obviously Douglas and Altenberger and Richardson. Richardson, who is out of the game, back in there now. Almost a five second call. Pretty good pressure right now by Kentucky with those two big guys on the wing. Bowie and Turpin make it very difficult to get the good passing angle. Mintz going inside to Montgomery, goaltending. Scored for Montgomery. I don't know if he ended up letting that shot go, that it wouldn't have been a little bit short. Pressure applied by the Illini in the backcourt, but Beal is no problem. Beal handles the ball so well for Kentucky out front. Very rarely makes the turnover out there. Offensive foul on Bennett. That's four fouls on Bennett. Winston Bennett, the outstanding Kentucky freshman, takes up his four personal foul. Watch Bennett right here. You see the foul? We'll be right back. Frank Lieber with Larry Conley back at Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky, where the cry go big blue is resounding off the rafters here. Take a look at the final four matchups. Virginia is the first team to qualify, beating Indiana today. Then, of course, the winner of this game goes to Seattle next week. And tomorrow, Wake Forest in Houston and Dayton and Georgetown will square off. That's the way the final four is shaping up. I bet when we started some uh, weeks ago with this tournament, we wouldn't think that there'd be that many surprises in this final eight. Of course, you can watch it all through the championship game a week from Monday night right here on CBS Sports. Illinois trailing by five, bringing it down. And again, that 1-3-1 one, one defense being employed by Kentucky. They've got Barrett in the basketball game. Montgomery gets in for an easy two. Sometimes you come off the bench like that, and you're not familiar with what's going on. I think Barrett let that pass go right to the inside, and they laid it up and in, and now they're within three. 33 to 30 with 14 minutes and 19 seconds left. Turnaround jumper fails to hit by Brett Barrett. Oh, pretty good move. Good move by Barrett right here. You'll see the rebounding right here in this half. Kentucky leading 9 to 3, a big advantage in the second half. Barrett 6 9 went inside against Altenberger that time, and Altenberger got him on the elbow. The second man is only a 64% free throw shooter. Barrett did not play the other night against Louisville. I believe he used all of it. He got every inch. Not a lot of confidence in his free throw shooting. A little uh, unorthodox shot. He shot it real short that time, but Bowie came up with it. Wildcats by four, and they have the ball. Dickey Bill undergone several arthroscopic uh, knee surgery procedures. Right, since he's gotten in the starting lineup for Kentucky, they have been 9-1. and one. He's shot over 60%. He's averaged 10 points a game. He's really the reason Kentucky's playing as well as they are right now. Cooley. See if they'll count the basket. No basket. Charging on Cooley.
We saw this the other night in the Louisville basketball game. Bowie charging in right here. It's a big foul. Altenberger with a good defensive position. Drew it. You see him on his back right there. Second foul on Bowie. Here come the Illini. A little bit of change in defense. They've gone away from that 1-3-1 one, one and gone to a 2-3. Somehow you get the impression with the noise level in here at times that every manhole cover in Lexington is being blown off. Nice move inside to Montgomery. Montgomery couldn't get it to go. The foul will go on Montgomery. George Montgomery must be awfully frustrated because he had it up there. The good lob again, and it was Bruce Douglas with a feed. Look at this. Nobody around him. He beat Bear up low on the baseline. That's all you get when you go inside there because Bowie's going to grab the second chance. Kentucky with a four-point advantage. 13 minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the game. Field Field defense. Defense. Look at that Illinois defense. They are really pressuring Kentucky. Making it difficult to make any type of good, clean pass. They did a job last week on Villanova, holding the Wildcats to 38%. Kentucky throws it away. Illini ball. Joe B. Hall. Not liking what he sees right now. Kentucky has turned it over 10 times in this game. Illinois 5. The other night against Maryland, Illinois went the whole second half with just one turnover. It's a very patient on offense. They're an intelligent basketball team. Lee Henson coaches his club to take good shots. Richardson knocks it down from 23. His fourth basket. What's the pressure? Bowie gets it down to Barrett. Even when Illinois presses the ball down court, Kentucky's not pressing the advantage. Once they get it over midcourt, they know it. They can retreat back and get their defense set up. Dickie Beal going inside. Turpin has it stolen. Douglas. Beal takes it away from him. Foul is on Douglas. Dickie Beal right there giving Illinois a little of their own medicine. They've been playing great defense. That time Beal stripped the ball from Douglas and started up the court, and Douglas just reached out and grabbed him. That was a big trip down the floor for the Illini because they could have tied it with 12 minutes to go. Master. Nobody does it better when he's on. That's what Turpin needs to do. Once the ball goes in there and they collapse on him, as Illinois has been doing, he needs to kick the ball back out quickly and give Master a chance for that jump shot. Winners in the corner. Took it back into that 1-3-1. One, one. Maybe a little bit of a floating 2-3. Look at Bowie try to go for the steal. Altenberger gets shot on the baseline. Doug Altenberger ringing the bell from 20 feet. In the corner, again, it's a two-point game. Kentucky doesn't have anybody to inbound. They just throw it high. They got Bowie there. Nobody going to reach him. Master tried to get around Richardson. Walker. Collapse. Boy, they just collapsed when that ball goes inside. Wild shot that time by Master. Montgomery grabs it. Here come the Illini with a chance to tie. 36. Douglas very patient on the outside. Who'll take the shot? Winners. Good time. Good feed by Altenberger. He saw winners in the corner and nobody came to get him. And winners just shot it from the baseline. Illinois tied this game. Third time we've been tied. Illinois' only lead was at 5-4. to four, With 16 minutes left in the first half. Beal drops it off to Walker. The penetration that time by Dickie Beal. Kenny Walker standing on the other side of the lane, received the pass and went up. Kentucky needs to do a little bit more of that. Illinois slumping off so much on the inside, they're really packing it back in, even though they look like they're, they are in their man-to-man -man defense. 
Mintz getting ready to come back in for the Illini and Blackman for Kentucky. Winners from the other side. Not this time. And Walker. Sky and high for the rebound. Inside to Turpin over Montgomery. That's about the only time in the second half that Kentucky has had success with that ball coming in there to Turpin. Illinois has been able to knock it back out. Now the crowd comes alive. Crowd is on its feet. Four-point lead for the Wildcats. Two, three, Illinois looking it over. They've got it in the middle. There's Richardson. Douglas with the follow. Master comes up with the rebound. Tipped to him by Turpin. Two pretty good shots at it, Frank. They had one from the corner by Richardson and the follow by Douglas, but they couldn't get him to go through. Patty Walker to Beal. Inside, Cooley. Get those winners, I think, maybe got the foul. Winners will pick up his first. Push the ball into the inside. That's what Kentucky does. Look at Winners trying to guard Bowie. There's a six-inch height differential there. Bowie tried to go up. Winners on the block. Bowie, a 72% free throw shooter, has four points and ten rebounds. Isn't that something? He makes 24 of 25, and now he's missed two in a row in this game. 8.32 left to play. Timeout, Kentucky, leading the Illini by five. Hurricane Carol Miller and USC reign supreme. Who will be this year's team of destiny? The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship next Sunday on CBS Sports. That young man at the center of the screen is Kentucky's latest recruit. He comes from West Germany. His name is Gunther Benke, and if he looks like he stands out a little bit in the crowd, it's because he looks tall even when he's sitting. He's seven foot four, and he's a good player. He's an outstanding player. A number of players coming from the West German area in here. We saw a couple in Washington last week. Coming up in the next few minutes, as this game winds down, we'll be selecting our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players. Chevrolet will be donating a $1,000 scholarship. Altenberger. Again, the Illini I have cooled off. Let's Great save. job of saving it. What a job by Winters in keeping that ball in play. That could be, end up being a big, big play if Illinois can get a score right here. Illinois needs a basket. They're down by five with eight minutes left to play in the game. Good shot of the Kentucky zone as you look from up top at 2-3. You see the two of the guys on the top of the free throw line. Illinois working the perimeter of that zone. There's Richardson. Two. Well, he's done that all afternoon. Quinn Richardson with five baskets, all of them from long range. And it's a three-point contest. You see how important that save by Winters was a moment ago. Kentucky has out-rebounded Illinois in the second half, 13-7. to seven. So they're up now, 10 rebounds for the game. Turpin with the miss. Richardson comes up with it. Illinois with a chance to trim it to one. Richardson on the drive. Dumps it off to Altenberger. Again, the patience of the Illini. The discipline. Altenberger could have taken a bad shot that time. Decided not to. He didn't have the numbers. Kelly Oop. Winners couldn't get to it, and Kentucky comes up with it. Boy, that could have been a big one because it would have got the Illini within one, and of course, it would have got him emotionally riled up with that slam. There's a Turpin going up for the shot. Rebound, Beal. Turpin with the next one. Next one, Bowie. is down on the floor. He is injured. I mean, it got a little rough underneath there. I'm telling you, there were some bodies flying around in there. Beal's right there. Here's Beal right here. He's going to take the ball up. He throws it back to Turpin. Turpin looks like he got hacked on the arm. Beal back with it again, trying to go up. Mints with the block. Turpin back again. Looked at 
this activity on the inside. There's Bench. You see Beal in the lower part. Watch Bowie get the basket. He's the one who hit Beal. He got him right in the nose. So Beal down to the floor. Looks like a bloody nose from here. Five-point lead for the Kentucky Wildcats as we have six minutes and 52 seconds left to play. Now he just needs a smelling salt, with not What makes it so tough, tough is the fact that uh, it was Bowie, his own teammate, who really caused the problem. You'll see him come down right here. After Bowie gets the shot, boom, right there is where he got it. It was, uh, it was Bowie's elbow that caught Beal right on the nose. come out for a breather first time he's been out of the ball game great catalyst for these Kentucky Wildcats I don't think they want him sitting on that sideline for very long they need to get him back in this basketball game well master is back in they got master and Blackman playing out front then Bowie and Walker and Turpin lined up underneath the basket five-point lead for Kentucky with 6.40 to go. Richardson. Got it! Oh, he is lighting it up from that corner over there. Bowie went to go get him, but he was too late getting there. Illinois wasn't even counting on Richardson being a starter at the start of the season. And he's had a great senior year. Knocked out of bounds by the Illini. Pressure now by Illinois. Richardson is six out of eight from the field. Look at this pressure. Good pressure again by Illinois. Kentucky got it in. And that's their pressure release right there, Sam Bowie. Kentucky leading by three. For the winner, a trip to the final four in Seattle next weekend. Altenberger will get the foul, his second. Turpin and Bowie are going to get a little gun shy pretty soon here about bringing that basketball down to the waist because every time they bring it down there, it's Altenberger, Richardson, or Douglas slapping it away, and here comes Dickie Beal. Big hand as Beal comes back into the lineup. The winner of this game, by the way, the way the pairings are set right now, will take on the winner of the Georgetown-Dayton game next Saturday in one of the two semifinal matches at Seattle which you'll see right here on CBS. Uh, Bowie, after missing the first two free throws, has made two in a row. Kentucky by five. Lou Henson. 2-3 zone again by Kentucky. You see Illinois attacking it with a 1-2-2. Two, two. There's the man who's led them today, and that's Ben Richardson. Good shooting from the outside. Altenberger is open. He can hit that shot and does. Doug Altenberger buries one from 20 feet. And again, it's a three-point game. Boy, Illinois will not let Kentucky get away, will they? Oh, you got guys like Richardson, Altenberger, and Douglas that can shoot the ball that well from the outside. You're going to keep the game close. Turpin. And if you've got a Turpin inside, he's going to keep him ahead. 13 for Turpin. Five-point lead for Kentucky. Five and a half minutes left. Alley oop. Intended for Bench. Knocked out of bounds by Kentucky. Illinois has had a really frustrating afternoon with this lob pass. They've had about four of those just like that with no one around and couldn't get the ball to drop through. They either mishandled it or mistimed the jump. Douglas and Altenberger. Winston Bennett, the Kentucky freshman, getting ready to come back into the game. He has four fouls on him. Kentucky's going to stay in that 2-3 zone. They're going to have to make some changes to try to get to Altenberger. Blood shot by the 6-4 sophomore from Peoria, Doug Altenberger. Again, a three-point Kentucky advantage. Illinois with a just very soft pressure up the floor. You see Douglas on Beal. Walker really fighting with Altenberger inside for position. A lot of muscling going on underneath the boards. Beal brings it back outside. He'll start it over again. The officials have really let these guys play in this basketball game. It's been an entertaining and a hard-fought contest. Inside to Bowie, and he is chopped on the arm by Montgomery. By the way, should this get into a free-throw shooting contest, Illinois is now over the limit, and Kentucky will be in the bonus the rest of the way. On the other hand, the Wildcats have fouled just twice here in the second half. Walker gets a rest. 
Bowie goes to the line, Bennett back in. Well, Sam Bowie, who did not score in the first half, did not even take a shot in the first half. Has 10 points here in the second half of play. Timeout, four minutes, 28 seconds left to play in the game. Frank Lieber with Larry Conley at noisy Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky, where the Wildcats lead it by five with four minutes and 28 seconds left to play. The Illini trying to hang in there despite the fact they're playing Kentucky in their lair. A lot of discussion about NCAA teams playing tournament games on their home court. Do you think it should be allowed? Well, I think it's a very difficult question. You know, obviously, it's, a, it's an advantage for any club who comes in here. I know Memphis State played uh, a couple of first-round games at their place. Uh, you've got to play somewhere, Frank, and obviously, this is a place that basketball is number one, and a lot of people want to come in here and watch it. And if Kentucky's playing here and they have the advantage, they'll sell a lot of tickets, which they have done. But it's obvious it gives the home club a terrific advantage when you got this crowd working for it. I remember in 1980, Duke came in here and beat Kentucky, though, in the Mideast Regional, and then Purdue won and went on to the finals. Altenberger knocks one down. Altenberger has suddenly heated up. He's got 12 points. And again, it's a three-point contest with the Illini applying the pressure. Sam Bowie almost let that one get away from him. Master again, good, controlling. Good pressure by the fighting Illini. They came down and picked up, and Bowie had to bring it up. Look at Kentucky to slow the basketball game down now. They're going to try to work for the good shot. They'll keep pushing that ball inside if they can. They're going to hold it. Kentucky operating with a basic starting lineup, which features four seniors. And Walker, the lone underclassman. Beal trying to get rid of it. He turns it over. I don't quite understand why Beal took the basketball and sheltered it. He couldn't do anything with it. And Anytime you get a defensive call like that, the five seconds, it's going to go to the fighting Illini. He just held the basketball. Chance for Illinois now to get to within one. Douglas on the outside. Kentucky has turned it over six times in the second half. Illinois twice. Richardson has been hot from the outside. So has Altenberger. Basket trims it to one. Three minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the game. The the winner, winner, a shot at Seattle. I think he's going to be content to stay in that 2-3 zone. If the fighting Illini is looking for someone to take that shot, they're going to look at those two hot hands in Richardson and Altenberger. Winners open in the corner. Bowie got a piece of it. Bowie got there in time to get a piece of it and deflected the shot. Great block by Sam Bowie. Kentucky again going to run that stall game. Look for the double team again. Here comes Richardson to help. And the foul will be on Quinn Richardson, his first. Here could be a big block. This could be a big play in this basketball game. Watch winners go up for the jumper right there. Look at Bowie. Stretched out, all 7-1 of him. Got the block, and Kentucky got the ball. One and one situation. For the Wildcats, the rest of the way as Illinois is over the limit with two minutes and 41 seconds left to play. We were doing a little reminiscing last night with uh, Dick Schreider, who's a member of the NCAA basketball committee. I didn't realize, for example, that this tournament was first played at the Evanston High School Gymnasium in Evanston, Illinois, in 1939. In fact, the first three years of it were played there. That's the final four we're talking about now. One out of two for Beal. Illinois, watch the timeout. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the game, and Kentucky leading Illinois by a score of 50 to 46. It did get a little nostalgic, uh, as we said, talking to Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten, who is one of the real instrumental forces in the Final Four, and how far it's become since he became involved back in the early 50s when he worked for the NCAA. And, of course, the expansion going to 64 teams next year is going to make this tournament even a bigger affair. They think this is going to become the biggest sporting event in the history of America, Frank. They think it's going to go on and become bigger than the World Series, bigger than the Super Bowl. Obviously, there's an awful lot of interest when you've got 64 colleges spread out all over the United States participating in such a big athletic event. Well, I would imagine these fans in uh, Kentucky feel it's there right now. 
Super Bowl World Series tied into one. And they hope to be there in uh, Seattle next week. One of the things I'm surprised about is the number of low-scoring games we've had in this tournament so far. Even the first, or the, the uh, final game down in the Eastern Region in Atlanta today, where Virginia beat Indiana, was a 50 to 48 score. We're going to be, it looks like, in the low 50s to mid 50s. A lot of clubs taking a lot more time, a lot more patience on their offense. NCAA statistics pointed out the other day that there are actually 20% fewer shots being taken now than there was 10 years ago. But yet the field goal percentages have continued to escalate. Clubs are taking better shots. They're just not taking as many of them. Difference in this ball game here in the second half has amounted to free throw shooting as Kentucky has hit eight out of 13 from the line and Illinois has not shot a single free throw in the second half. Timeout situation. Kentucky with three, the Illini with two, with two minutes and 35 seconds left. Illinois has the ball. They are down by four. They're going to stay in that 2 3 zone, Kentucky is. Altenberger and Richardson now switching sides of the floor. Douglas at the top. Looking inside to Montgomery. Richardson's been hot and continues that way. Quinn Richardson gets his seventh long range basket. And it's a two point game. Good pressure that time by Illinois. A little bit stiffer pressure. They got feel in the corner. They may have the 10 cap. They did. They turned it over. Illinois ball. Big turnover right there. And again, it was the defense. It's Lou Henson's fundamental man-to-man -man defense. The pressure got to Kentucky. They couldn't get it across. Chance to tie. 50 to 48. Kentucky leading. Illinois with a basket to tie here. Douglas takes the shot. Bowie grabs the rebound. And the open shot from 18 feet couldn't hit it. Master in the backcourt. Chased by Richardson. Watch Richardson hawk Master. He is all over him. Good tight pressure. Winners out on Bowie. He's pulled him out. Almost another five count. Douglas taking a swipe at it. Master double team gets rid of it to Bowie. They're going to keep the ball in the hands of Masters. He is the best free throw shooter they have. He's the man that Illinois does not want to foul. When do you foul at this point? Clock is run down to just over a minute. Kentucky playing keep away with a two-point lead, 50 to 48. As another NCAA tournament game goes down to the wire. Frank, don't you believe the fighting line? I don't know the master is a good free throw shooter, and they're not going to foul him, and Kentucky's going to take a timeout. Kentucky has two timeouts left, 50-48. They lead it. little addition to the family. Name, PC Junior. Weight, 12 pounds. Small but powerful, PC Junior. Designed by IBM to make computing easy for everyone. PC Junior comes with bright ideas, like a keyboard that doesn't need a cord. It's called the Freeboard. There are picture instructions to help you get started and special overlays to help you find the right keys. You can get easy-to-use software like a word processing program and more surprises. Games and graphics your kids won't believe, plus a starting price you won't believe. And with easy-to-add options, Junior can grow up real fast. PC Junior, the new family edition from IBM. 49 seconds left to play, and regardless of how this thing comes out, you got to give a lot of credit to Lou Henson and Illinois. You talk about the coaching job that uh, Bobby Knight did in this tournament. How about the job that Henson has done playing at Rupp Arena, Kentucky's home court, playing with his uh, his top score, Efren Winners, uh, really hobbled with a, a sore ankle, and yet he's, he's hung in there all the way. They've done an outstanding job of playing today. I think their defense has been about as good as I have seen this year. And they've really come on to the forefront. I can see why they just lost four games this year, and obviously one of them against Kentucky. But they played an outstanding tournament, and it's not over with yet. 
Now, how long do you wait here before you foul? Well, you've got to go after the basketball. The way they play their defense, they'll really come out and try to pressure. Let's see if they try to steal this inbounds pass. Obviously, the guy they don't want to foul is Master. Kentucky has turned it over seven times in the second half. Again, they go to the safety release there, and Bowie, Dickie Beal, drives in for two. A whistle, and let's get the call. Going to be a timeout call for the Illini. Got so noisy here, you couldn't tell what they were calling. But it is timeout called by the Illini, who now trail by four with 37 seconds left on the clock. And the chess game continues here at Rupp Arena. You know, Fred, that's really a good point, because when this crowd gets so loud in here, it's very difficult to hear that whistle. And you can see right here, Dickie Beal with a good move to the inside. Everybody thinks they're going to hold it. Beal goes right to the basket with it. We talked about the leadership this young man provided. Boy, that was a big basket right there for the Wildcats. As I recall, Beal, uh, while he was being recruited, came very close to going to DePaul. There was a big flap over that. He wound up at Kentucky, and uh, he has been hampered by injuries throughout his career, but he's certainly come on strong in the last half of uh, this, his senior season. And he is the spark that uh, makes the Wildcats go. Well, the insertion of him into that starting lineup about 10 games ago really changed this Kentucky basketball team. It changed the way they did things. It gave him some extra speed, some quickness, and he really is the leader right now. All of these guys are looking to him. So there's our story. Free throw situation, a big factor here in the second half, as we mentioned, with Kentucky doing all of the free throw shooting. And Illinois not having a single free throw attempt. Kentucky only has two fouls so far in this second half. They've been playing a lot of zone defense, and you can get away with not committing too many fouls if you sit back in a very passive zone. That's the timeout situation. What do you do now? Get a shot off as quick as you can and then foul? Well, I think what you've got to do is get the shot off. A good shot. They've got 37 seconds. Let the ball fall through. Call your timeout. Get your defense set up. They've had some success setting up that pressing defense. Kentucky comes man to man. Douglas taking the inbounds pass to Winters. Richardson wide open. Yes! One more time for Quinn Richardson, who makes it a two-point game with 23 seconds to go. And Beal in heavy traffic gets it across the center line, almost traveled. He is fouled by Douglas. Did he come close to walking or did he? I thought he was very close to walking. Watch him cross the half court line right here. He dragged that extra step. It looks like he may have done it. It happened right in front of us here. You'll see it again. Beal's got the basketball nowhere to go. They've got him trapped. Douglas has got him on one side, Winters on the other. They look up at the official, and there's the call. Bowie was shaken up. And Sam Bowie will need some attention. Getting the same leg where he had the stress fracture. And the way they're manipulating it may be a cramp. Let's hope that's all it is. Larry has seen a lot of action. It was his left shin bone that uh, sidelined him with the stress fracture for two years. He uh, is in his fifth year, but he's only played uh, three. Of course, they only allow you. you got to play your four years in five. And this is only his third year of playing. He did sit out those two full years. The impressive thing about Illinois' defense is the fact that they really came out after Kentucky after that made field goal again by Richardson. It fell through there. I looked for them to call a timeout. They didn't do it. They went straight to their press, and they almost got the turnover. He is hobbling. You'll see Bowie go down right here. That's where he fell. Looks like it might be just a cramp. Beal on the free throw line is a 77% free throw shooter on the year. He's one out of one today. Wildcats doing some celebrating now with a three-point lead with 14 seconds to go. Douglas, fouled by Master. 
I don't quite understand that foul right there. Why would Master want to come out and stop the clock? What you want to do is put good pressure on the basketball, but not allowed. Oh, I see why now. They've only committed two fouls. This is just their third foul. They can go for a couple of more, too. Jensen right there is wanting the two shots. Timeout. Kentucky with 12 seconds left to play. Labor with Larry Conley back at Rupp Arena where the decibel level is unbelievable at this point. Kentucky leading 54 to 50. Wildcats, of course, won it all back in 1978, one of five national championships. They try to get back to the final four, and they're 12 seconds away from doing just that. You know, Frank, that was an interesting question you asked me while we were away. Why would Kentucky want to foul to stop the clock? Obviously, if you put good pressure on and you don't foul and you let them continue going down, you're going to get each tick of the clock. Kentucky still has three more fouls to take before Illinois walks to the line to shoot the one and one. They may take them, they may not take them. That four-point lead looming very large right now. Word on Bowie is that he has a sprained ankle and nothing more from the Kentucky bench. Altenberger into Douglas. Master. Fouled him quick before he got the shot off. And again, two seconds went off the clock. So Kentucky working that clock down by fouling. Now that's still only the fourth team foul. They have two more to give before the Illini are in the one and one situation. Look for him to do it again. Now he's going to get it up. Richardson. Foul is on Turpin underneath the basket for shoving off on Montgomery. Two more seconds of the clock went off, and again, they take it out of bounds. No shooting foul. Still one more foul to give. Douglas will inbound it. Eight seconds left to play. is going to be on Beal, and this time I think it is going to be a shooting foul. It's going to be two shots, and only one tick of the clock goes off. Look at Joe Hall. Is he upset? That whole Kentucky bench has been up off of their seats all afternoon. This Illinois team has really pushed them to the limit. Doug Altenberger on the free throw line. Sam Bowie, sprained ankle at all, back in the lineup for the Wildcats here for the last seven ticks. Good pressure free throw by Altenberger. He just walked up there and knocked it down. This one will get him within two, and they'll come right back with that press. 13 points for Altenberger, three out of three from the line. That's a big miss. Big miss. Richardson grabs it. Back to Altenberger, three seconds. Still not enough. And now they're saying no basket. Kentucky wins it. are going to Seattle and they join Virginia as the second of the four regional champions great coaching job by this man Lou Henson who kept his team close all day long and had a chance to pull it out at the end they had a great afternoon of basketball here and Lou Henson is to be credited with a great coaching job We'll have post-game interviews coming up shortly from Rupp Arena in Lexington. Now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Frank, and so Kentucky now is on its way to Seattle. Tell you what the home court advantage sometimes can mean in a basketball game. The Fighting Illini did not get to the free throw line once in the second half, 
And meanwhile, Kentucky was there 15 times in the second half. And then, of course, there was that questionable traveling call. But for Kentucky, they are one of the strongest teams in the tournament now, and they have an excellent chance to come away with the national championship. Of course, the big story that's about to develop with that team is the physical condition of Sam Bowie. They're going to need him, especially if they go up against Pat Ewing and Georgetown. Now, our Chevrolet players of the game, they are Quinn Richardson of Illinois and Big Mel Turpin out of Kentucky. And we will continue on our coverage on the road to the Final Four here on CBS in just a moment. 